Let's talk about settings.py. This is absolutely a basic thing uh, that you'll end up using a lot. It, it has a lot of implications for your project altogether. So we'll just go sort of line by line as to what's going on here. Of course, you could read more on the docs because there is more that is going on behind the scenes than just what we'll mention. Uh, first and foremost, we of course import the OS because Django works on any given operating system, Windows, Mac, and Linux, all of you guys see the exact same thing if you've done what we've done to this point. So you see we import OS and then we have this variable named base dir that's set to this long string of what the heck is going on. All this does is gives us the path of where manage.py is, but more specifically the folder that is holding manage.py, which in our case is src. So it's that folder right there, okay? So how I know this is, well, I know Python well, I know Django well, but how you can figure out where that directory is, that's this right here. So baster just gives you, in my case, that, right? So your user might be different. And if you're on Windows, it's gonna be different for sure. The, the, the slashes will be in a different direction. Um, so the nice thing here is we know that Django knows where it is in the system that's that's important right so we can do things relative to django inside the entire project that's pretty cool and this baster shows us that right off the beginning um and, and you know you could print out what the baster is too if you were so inclined you can print that out and just run the server again let's go ahead and run that server again and what do you know it actually prints out that directory for us right just like i said that's where it is that's what it is. Cool. Uh, next thing is the secret key. Every Django project has a secret key that's associated to it. They're always unique to that project, um, or at least they should be unique to that project. Um, and you don't want to make it, you know, public in production because it it could possibly lead to security leaks, and you don't want that. So just doing a couple changes is good. Okay. Next thing is debug. This is something that's very useful while you're learning or while you're developing, both things. Uh, when you bring it into a live server, a live production environment, it's a real website with real people, real strangers using it, you're gonna turn that to false. And that has some implications later. Allowed hosts, like domain names that are allowed, I'm not gonna get into that right now. Installed apps, this is a cornerstone of Django. Um, installed apps, there's a bunch of them installed by default, which we'll go over later, but this is where you're going to build your apps. Like, you know, if you have a blog that you're creating, you would put it in installed apps. If you have products, a list of products that you have, you would put it in installed apps. Um, that is, I mean, very core to Django and think of apps more in terms of components than apps, right? So like apps has taken on a new meaning like your mobile phone has a bunch of apps. It's not like that. It's more of like little pieces of the greater Django project itself. Uh, middleware, this is, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things going on here, but it has to do with your requests and how requests are handled and also how security is handled and stuff like that. This is something we'll go over later. It's definitely more of an advanced topic, uh, but it's nice because it allows us to know that there's a lot of security features built in as we can see with some of the ones that are already there. Uh, root URL conf, this is something we'll definitely cover for sure too. This is how Django knows how to route any given URL. Um, you know, so like I'm, my server is running right now. So if I take a look at that running server, if I go to slash, you know, it, whatever, this is URLs like, so those things are automatically routed by default, by Django. Something that's really cool as a built-in feature in there. Uh, the next thing is templates. Uh, you know, like Django renders out HTML templates. We're gonna go over this a lot, but basically like where do we store them? How are they rendered? How do they work? All that stuff we'll go over later, but it's essentially the HTML page that gets rendered in Django. It's really cool, it's very useful, and it's uh, definitely a common topic that we'll go over. Uh, the next thing is the WSGI application. Uh, this is how your server works. So the server goes through and uses this setting that's here. In some cases you change it, in other cases you just leave it as is. 
Next thing, databases. Django maps to databases really, really well. So MySQL, Postgres SQL, and a few others as well, very easily maps to it. You just change your backend here, where it's located, and some of the other settings. You can go in the docs to see all of that, but by default, it has a SQLite 3 database already there, as you might see right there. That's pretty cool. Next thing is we have password validators. Um, this just validates that passwords are good or at least good to the current standards of what Django has found. We have some internationalization stuff. I'm gonna skip that for now. And then finally, static files. Like where do you store your images, your JavaScript, um, and your CSS? So like where do you store those things? Static files is something we'll absolutely talk about as well. But but settings is kind of controlling all this, right? So it's, it's, it's pretty fundamental to how all of our Django project is running. And that's in our main configuration. I mean, that's it, that's it for settings. I mean, we will talk and use these things a lot more, uh, but what I did wanna mention is one last thing, one actual practical thing is, is that, that database thing. So we had this error here, and to run our database, we can run python manage.py migrate. So what this does is it actually syncs our settings, whatever settings we have with our Django project and in whatever apps we have. We're gonna go over this again for sure, but all this is, is this right here. So we've got db.sqlite3. I just said, hey, database, make sure you and Django are hooked up and you're ready to start working. So if I actually change this to db2, I could run migrate again. And what do you know? Django actually creates a brand new database for me. Now, this is pretty much only true with SQLite. Um, if you had MySQL or Postgres SQL, you would have to create those databases themselves. But for us, we can just do whatever you'd like. As far as the database is concerned, I'm gonna go with the default of db.sqlite3. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that file. Now we have a better understanding of how settings work. Let's go ahead and create our first app. See you in the next one. Make sure you subscribe to get everything on joincfe.com slash YouTube. We're gonna be doing so much more Django stuff. See you next time.